Hey guys, Ryan Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. Where are we today? We're somewhere in Belgium. Somewhere in Belgium. Let me introduce the gentleman here in front of me. I'll let you in introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's Serge Van Elzacker. I'm uh, 63 years old. I have pigeons for 53 years. We live here for 32 years. And I think I'm a good fancier, but that I'll leave over to the opinion of Ryan. So Some super results, that's <laughs> for sure. And consistency, consistency, consistency. And you love the pigeons. I love it, really, I do. My wife always say, I, I, don't, I hope you don't have to choose between me and the pigeons because I think I have to pack my baggage, and I think it is. And, and, and the most interesting part, and we can, we can walk in, yeah, right. because we're all mic'd up, was you started pigeons quite differently from most, well, from, from a lot of people. You, you started a different way. You, you didn't have a, it wasn't in your family. No, it was by accident by, because my parents bought a, a, a new store and on top of the roof there was a pigeon loft with pigeons in it. The fancier has died, unfortunately. And uh, I asked the son if I could keep the pigeon. I was only 10 years old and my mother thought, well, he tried everything so far, let's try pigeons. And 53 years later, I still have pigeons. So, but nobody in my family Family ever, ever, nobody ever had pigeons. And you just so, started on your own when you were 10? When I was 10, oh. the first six years was not a very big success, I think, because I didn't know what I was doing. I, I had no idea what a pigeon was, no feeding, no medication, no no handling at all. I was turning up my loft upside down in the middle of the racing season, so that didn't work out. But then going to uh, school, my uh, one of my teachers was a very good fancier. Uh, William Gears here, uh, when my parents moved to Schilde, lived here, was a, a great fancier, one of the best I ever knew here. And a little local fancier from here who was a, a, a sprint champion also helped me a lot and that's how I learned. I read every book that was written about pigeons I, I read and I made my own systems and uh, it seems to work out for, for all those years. So since you got into the pigeons at 10, did you ever not have pigeons? No. Oh. Yes, uh, no, no I didn't. I, I thought yes when I was in the army, but now that's not true. My mother took care of the pigeons then, they were at home. But I never had no pigeons, never. No. 53 years I have pigeons now. 53 years and you, your, your specialty in racing, what, what's your specialty? I wouldn't call it a specialty, I would call it uh, what I like the most and it's middle distance. Middle uh, distance. I, like, I like 300, 350 to 600 kilometers, that I like most. Although with young birds we have a, a very good program here, 215 kilometer racing, Voyant, and I love those too. But the real sprint, 100 kilometers, I don't like so much. Uh, it's, uh, it's over in two, three minutes, I don't think that's pigeon racing. Uh, and in this area where, where we are, um, the, 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 your, your club, what's the name of your club? My club is uh, Eendrecht Schilde. Uh, okay. On the middle distance we race here either in the South Antwerp Union and in the Antwerp Union. Uh, we race provincial and then we race national. And uh, your, your club, how many members are in your club? In my club now at the moment we still have 98 members and in the in the, the Kemps Fund Club it's actually the, the race is over 480 kilometers. We have 130 members that we race against here in the area. Um, why I love the most the middle distance, it's something I always liked the best. I never was really a sprint fancier, it was too quick for me. I have big hands, so I like to feed as much as I want. It's not for sprint to get them in quickly, um, and it's something that grows over the years. I, I tried everything, tried the extreme long distance, tried the sprint, tried it, but I always keep, seems to keep coming back to the middle, di to the middle distance. Um, I'm also the only fancier ever to be king in three different unions. I was two times king in the Antwerp Union, I was king in the South Antwerp Union, and I was king in the Hoogstraat, the Havo Union, it doesn't exist anymore. And I think I'm the only one that ever won it in all three of the unions. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and before we go and look at the lofts, look at the birds, look at the race lofts, the family of pigeons that you... Yeah, this my old family, uh, the, be the family that brought me the most success was the old Jansen, the Mulemans, from Carl Schellens, the Hofkens and the Stosers pigeons. Those were my, that's my old base. 
uh, all bought not in the real lofts from those fanciers because I didn't have the money in those days to buy those pigeons. So I bought them all from people that have bought them there and had success with them. Because our area here, um, Carl Muhlemans, actually the old loft was Adrian Wouters. Mm -hmm. He raised the Mercs, the Cadet, the Witness. He, he was a racing loft, Carl Muhlemans was a breeding loft. But Adrian Wouters died and and they were auctioned here in the area and few fanciers bought those pigeons and were so successful with them that all the good results here in the area were actually Adrian Wouters Muhlemann's pigeons. Cross with Janssen's and then the, the, the pigeons from Franz Stosis from Winterslag, I had really, really good success with them. And that's the old family. In 2006, I, had, I bought a few Gabby van der Nabele pigeons from Recools and they brought me a lot of success cross with my old base. And that's about how it turns. I bought some more Janssen Muhlemans. I brought some Willem de Bruyne pigeon from Leo van Rijn. That brought real success from the first year. They were smashing young birds. And that's how it's most based on middle distance up to 700 kilometers. Well, Serge, uh, I want to thank you for that great intro. I see your, you got the Roanfried jacket on. <laughs> You're sponsored by them, good I'm, products. I'm sponsored by them by, for now 33 years. I'm the oldest member in their Roanfried racing team. And I think really good products. Uh, I can't use them all because they're too many products, but some products that I use, I'll show you in the loft. I think really make a difference keeping the pigeons healthy. I don't think they can make them fly faster. I don't think they can make them win first prizes, but I think they can help you on a natural way keeping your pigeons healthy. All right, well on that note guys, sit back and enjoy this loft tour. Serge Van Alsacker of Belgium. We're gonna go take a look at the loft. Thank you. Here we are, we are coming up to the loft of Serge Van Alsacker. As you see, it's got the Rhone Free jacket on. Now this is a nice property you have here, eh? Yeah, it is. We bought it specially for the pigeons. Yeah? We, yeah, we, we uh, have a permit to build the loft and we bought the, the ground, the, the, the property specially for building this loft 31 years ago. Okay. And if I wouldn't have a permit, I would have sold the, lo the, 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 the land again because I wanted these lofts. Wow, now this is, and I'm just gonna take this back in here so you guys can see. Serge, how, what's the length of this loft? This loft is uh, 50 meters. 50 meters. 150 feet. 150 feet. Yeah, two lofts on 25 meters. It's 25 meters young bird loft, four lofts. They hold about 200 in young birds. And it's uh, 25 meters uh, widowed loft. It's seven lofts. I can put in uh, 132 widowed cocks, okay. and I have almost every year I have about 50. Okay. I like a loft, not too many pigeons, keep you, helping you keep them healthy okay. with no problem. Also thing is the pigeons here are inside for more than five months uh, with the birds of prey the problem. Okay. So if I don't fill the loft that much, I can keep them healthier without using medication, without having problems, without having everything. So you like to use a lot of room. Yeah. Give them a lot of room. Yeah. Uh, beautiful loft. I, I can tell this loft's going to breathe great. You got a nice high uh, peak roof there. You got the uh, the wire on the top so they don't go on the top. Yep. I like your uh, landing board. They're very nice. <laughs> I like that. Uh, we'll get up closer to that. Now I noticed you've got the big barrel here. Yeah, it's for my nest bowls. To they they I, I always put them in chlor or what do you call them? Chloride. Bleach. Bleach. Yep. So you and they're in there for a month and then I take them out and I use them again. So they're always clean. So you, you keep them sterile, they're yeah. always in here. Yeah, they're always, I, I, I let them dry then, yeah. but when they're used for one round of youngsters, they always go in here. So after every round, yep. you switch? You switch the bowls. Switch yep. the bowls, so you got a lot of bowls. You gotta be, you gotta be pretty strong <laughs> to carry all those bowls. <laughs> Man, and how, does, how is it that we show up and we get a hurricane wind again? Yeah, it's, so, Be it's Belgium, huh? So this is sort of a landing board yep. you use? Yeah, because and my pigeon can't sit on the roof, so that's the only opportunity they have that's a landing board over here. And, as and you once they're used to it, I mean the first, when you let the young birds out, the first weeks, once there and there, they try to go up. But I always chase them down. Right. And if you get a bird home from racing, 
and you get few together and one tried to be on the roof, it's always a stranger. Your pigeons never, they always hit the board, but most of them, they hit, they hit right that board. And, and I would say that that's about, what, 10 feet from the, from the loft? Two meters. Two meters. Yeah, it's about eight, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah two meters, eight, eight or nine feet, yeah, whatever. Eight, nine feet, yeah. And you've got this running the whole way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Beautiful. It's, Simple. Yeah, it's easy. It's it's also it's it's more like a drive-in uh, from McDonald's for the birds to prey because all my birds sitting here when they're young <laughs> and they just have to pick out. So I have a lot of problems with that. But uh, other than that, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't miss it because once you have a bird on that roof, it's a very high roof. Yeah. I have no, no control of them here. I, I, I always watch their the races. Yeah. And when see. they hit when they hit the board, I just walk behind them and push them in. And, and they, they don't go up, they just they just go in. I also notice your loss off the ground. So the Yeah, the air underneath. can the air can go under it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I think is very good here to have, to keep uh, a loft dry. And we, as you see, we have a lot of wind, so. <laughs> this is, this <laughs> help, is beyond wind. It helps dry. <laughs> um, question, I, I notice outside your loft, I see you have a bath pan out here. So you bathe the birds outside? I bathe the young birds outside. Right. Uh, when I stand with them. Okay. I never bathe the old birds outside anymore. I did that in the early years. Now I bathe them in the aviary in the back because the, the, the chance of hitting by a hawk or a sparrow hawk or a falcon is too too high. And but young birds I have no other opportunity than bait them outside. Okay. And I like to bait my pigeons once a week every Monday. I believe in that very strongly to keep a pigeon healthy. And if if I don't get a pigeon in, in racing season on Monday, I'm not convinced I'm not very comfortable. I think they're too nervous. I want to have them go into bat with pleasure. And I think then their state of mind is good. They they they're they're confident. They they they're happy. Okay. They don't get them in. I think they're too nervous. And I try then the next day. I want to go. I want to have a pigeon take a bat every week in racing season, not in winter. Okay. Racing season. In racing season. Um. Anything you put in the bath water? Yes, I put bath salt in the water with uh, some against uh, the little bugs. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, like parasites, yeah, something like yeah. that. Uh, Another question: warm water, cold water, hot no, water? No, cold water. Cold, cold water. water. All cold water. Okay. Yeah. We're, now we're starting to get the rain. It's starting to rain. Let's go inside. Yes. And while we're walking in, we can continue to talk. Uh, you use the flags as well? I use the flags. Yes, I do. Because I, I told you before, I don't go road training. Uh, never, just before season a few times and then not. So I want if they train, they have to train 45 minutes with the flag, and that's it. Once a day. Once and a that's day. It. Once you, do you find you need to use the flag often or not really? I do it. Um, I do it, and I also find it a system because the flag's up, the pigeons up. Flag go down, boom, and they're in. They're in. And I think it's it's a kind of training. It's a kind of conditioner. Okay. Might it's start raining hard now, right? Well, what can I say? Let's let's take a look at the young birds from this year. Oh. These are the young birds, this first round. Can I go in? Yeah, you can go in. I only have to watch that they don't come out. Uh, yeah. But go in, do your thing. Very nice. You can see these youngsters are molting very, very nice, healthy. Pass it, man. Come on there. Pass it, sir. So, this is your young bird section. This is my young bird section. I have four of the same sections. I can put 400 young birds in if I fill every box, but I don't like to fill it. Uh, I have about, uh, these are about 90. 90. 90. 90 is good for the loft, but I I seem to find out that I'm going to lose about till I'm to 70 or 60, and then the loft is even better. Okay. So, 
Th this loft here, you can see the super health on these youngsters. Anything they've been given special so far? So no, they them? just had a five day treatment against trichomonas. Um, that's about it. No, nothing yet. Nothing yet. No, but you see they're molting. Oh, they're molting very nice. And they're not darkening, but that's because the breeders have light till 11 o'clock. And once they put them here, you, the lights are out and yeah. they start molting. And I've heard lots of people say that they'll, they'll leave the breeders on 18 hours light. When they pull the youngsters out and the youngsters now go to regular time, it just tricks them to molt. And you can see these here. You take a look at that, the red molting super hard the loft very nice in here no smell of pigeon at all no no anything uh, i see you have the ventilation here do you play with these or you no, always leave it always like that never I changes play, i don't play with it no i play with the front that was you saw it was open yes but now it start raining i close it and, and it's still open there in the front in the, in the bottom yes it's, so, it's still open the air comes from there Birds come through there. Now I see there's something blue outside there. Is that a drinker? Yeah, it's a drinker. It's the drinker that they have on the basket. Mm -hmm. And I learned to drink them like that. So they're used to it. When they come in the basket, they know they know the blue thing. There's water in it. And they I learned to drink them like that here by just normal. Just so right from the word go. Yeah. The drinkers out there. Yeah. Yeah, not only that, they have drinkers here. Oh yeah, no no no. I I I, I see. I have also drinkers here, but I have also a a blue drinker all uh, and and they they like to drink from that blue is uh, just as good as they do from the normal drinker well you can tell the health on these youngsters boy look at look at the red there look at it molten eh? the checker man you clean every day uh, here I clean every day because they're too much mm -hmm. here on my racing hands they're still in the young bird law from my second round and I don't clean every day so these are the hens. They're not used to people, eh? No. And you see the loft is not so clean. It smells a little bit to pigeons here, but it's because it's not so clean. Once I start raising season from beginning of March, I clean every day. Come here. And these are your these your is hens. my racing team hens yeah and you fly them widowhood to total widowhood total widowhood yeah for people new people that watch our show yeah total widowhood quick rundown on it i raise both uh, partners cox and hens uh, it doesn't need to be necessarily on the same race it could be that i basket uh, the, the hens on thursday for uh, 500 kilometers or 600 i basket the cox on friday for 350. cox are home earlier of course but i have always one two three hens home i just throw them in the loft they can they can have fun till the regular hen comes home and then they stay home till next morning or till evening when it's dark and but i raise both partners that means total widowhood um, i start with 50 couples on total widowhood so it's 100 pigeons i do it for five six weeks so it, it means uh two times 100 kilometers two times 200 kilometers and then we have 370 and then i keep the worst ones home if if i have a super one i keep his partner home why because i don't want to take any risk losing that partner because i think that partner is a part of his motivation okay uh, it doesn't always need to be i had a, a super car called the extra he won seven first he won four first provincial his hen was never home never in an hour when he was home so she was a bad hen and the third year i kept his hen home he never won a first prize anymore so what do i know nothing you're still learning yeah we're still learning uh, no guarantees is it no no guarantee but i don't want to think i had also good pigeons that that flew good and then i lost the partner and it was over they didn't flew anymore so i don't want to take that risk if i have a super one i keep his partner home if it's not a good one if i have two bad ones after six weeks so the cock doesn't raise good the hen doesn't raise good i kill him i throw him out i don't keep him in if it's one good one i keep the partner home i keep the good one of course if it's two bad ones two that haven't done anything for six weeks in a row out out they're gonna they're gonna be killed immediately i don't want them anymore it's uh i have a hundred pigeons i have enough choice i have a good selection but i only want to keep the best i'm not not interested in all the rest wow well said so the young birds uh we were in the young bird loft how uh 
How hard will you work the youngsters? Law fly, so you law fly them once a day? I law fly them once a day. Okay. Uh, they're separated, uh, they're, they're together till they are going to 215 kilometers. Now hold on. Yeah. Before this, you love. Before this, I love flying every day. Every day, right. okay. Uh, three weeks before the first race, you start training? Uh, if I can. It, it, it depends on, I mean, they've been out now five, six times. You see how old they are? Yes. I usually get problems with birds of prey. So, and by the, then they, I have a period that my youngsters won't come out. They don't like to come out anymore. I have to push them out. Uh -huh. And they don't want to train. Uh, so, I'm, I'm in a bad period in that time. So, I'm never actually ready for the first first young bird race on 15 of May, never. I try to be ready by the 1st of June. I want them here to, to be routing, I mean, uh, road, they have to go, they have to be gone for an hour, come back in parts, and then I know I can go training. When I see them flying around the lot for an hour, but I can visit, I can watch them all the time, I know it's not good, because if I go train then, I'm, I'm in trouble most of the times. So you wanna see them, let them out, they disappear, they break up, they, oh, 15, come home, five yeah. come home, two come home, hey, it took all day to come home. And then I know they're ready. Uh -huh. And then I take them about four or five training tosses. I mean, I, I start three miles, five miles, seven miles, 20 miles. I put them in the, in the club, 65 miles. That's the first young bird race, 105, 110 kilometers. I never go road training anymore, never. Okay, so your, your young bird training program with a car, you physically getting in a car and going training, yeah. you will train maximum about six times yeah maximum and then you've gone the six times they go to the club yeah. for the first hundred kilometer yeah. uh, young bird race yeah then I usually then when the weather's great I put them Sunday 100 kilometers I put them Wednesday 100 kilometers I put them Sunday 100 kilometers I put them Wednesday 100 kilometers and then I put them to 200 and then when I once I put I go to 200 the Wednesdays are gone so I don't go road training but I like to have them a Wednesday midday uh, 110 kilometers again right and another thing I want to mention here which I think is is interesting you've been flying this system of, of this training method six times with the youngsters before you get them going how many birds do your youngsters get released with the first time they go to the races um, if they go on the Wednesday it's about I think seven eight thousand pigeons okay if they go on the Sunday it could be 20 30 thousand pigeons it's uh, it's a provincial release of Antwerp the first uh, and and it's together with uh, Antwerp East Flanders Vlaams Brabant it's three provincials the first lofts are about 40 kilometers that they race the back lofts near the Dutch borders are 125 130 kilometers that they race but they all go out at the same time Wow. It's a big release. Uh, it was different in the early years, and we seem to have more losses the first time they go to Kivrain, the first time they do it. Mm -hmm. they, we seem to have more losses than we had in the early years. But once they did it once, the losses are gone. It's finished. Uh, the second, third, fourth, fifth time, no, no problems anymore. But the first time is always hard. And I think it's a big release that makes them the problem. Uh, now, an another question. You, you enjoy flying young birds but your real Older. love is yearlings yep. two-year-olds like that so when you're flying these youngsters yeah how many weeks will they race uh, I think my youngsters normally race 10 to 12 weeks 10 to 12 weeks and, and how, they go they go far? to 400 kilometers 400 kilometers in the early years I raised them to 600 mm -hmm. uh, but I found out if I push them to the national we call the nationals it's uh, four nationals we have 480 560 and two times 600 that was the old program if you do them all four the next year they're not as good anymore so I always raise young birds as in my mind my old bird team and I don't want to squeeze them I don't want to push them I want good results because I won nine out of the 12 last races with young birds I won last year but I don't want to push them too hard so I, I, I like to don't over go to over 400 kilometers anymore with the young birds and it seems to be that the yearling they, they step up a, a little bit even and, and, and I'm an old bird racer I like more old birds you know what team you 
have, you know, the system, young birds, it's always here or always there. Then they get young bird sickness, and they get an eye infection. Then they get this, they get that. It's it's not so easy racing young birds. Now another question. You've got a whole group of beautiful, super healthy youngsters. Yeah. Let's say you go in there tomorrow and one doesn't look right, yeah. or one's thirsty, you need to drink a water, they can't find the feed, what do you do? Uh, to be honest, not finding the feed never happens. Okay. Uh, I separate them with enough feed in front of them. Okay. They find the feed always. Some don't find a drinker. You see it when they twinkle their eyes. I put them, I put them in the drinker. And that's it. Once they're that age and there's one that doesn't keep healthy, he's dead. It's okay. very simple. Do you drink a bird numerous times? No. One time? One time. If you have to do it again? Uh, it never really happened. Uh, it happened one time in my whole life. <laughs> And it's a pigeon, I think I have to drink him 20 times. He was so stupid, he ran behind me squeaking, beep, beep, yeah. beep, beep, I hate that. Okay. But he was so beautiful, I kept him. And I, I will call his name as a yearling, the Fantast. He was unbelievably good. And he was so <laughs> stupid as a young bird, never had it again. But now when I push him one time with the head in the water, they usually know to drink it. But you see, I have in the young bird law, yes. I have four drinkers, two on the floor, two uh, on, on a higher uh, platform, Right. and they usually find it. Uh, it could happen one time, but that's it. Any secrets to the feeding with the no. young birds? No, I feed the young bird mixture one time a day as much as they want. Uh, there's always a little bit feed in the feeder left, and they eat that in the morning. I don't feed them in the morning, but they have that, and that's it. And they always listen good because they're usually hungry by evening, and I always feed once a day. Once a day. Once a day. With the youngsters. With the youngsters. With also with the old birds. Mm -hmm. uh, when they come in in the morning, they get small seeds, uh, a treat. Yes. Uh, sometimes, some years I had peanuts in it. Other years I don't have peanuts in it. Depends. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try this year again with peanuts. Um, and then in the evening, they can pick out what they want for half an hour, as much as they want. Always the same mixture, never from light to heavy, for about... 35 years now, I think. Mm -hmm. Always the same. After half an hour, take it away. Next day, same story. When I go basketing on Thursday night, they get as much as they want by noon, and it stays there in front of them. I don't take it away until they go in the basket. Okay. Very simple. Very simple. Very simple. Here we are, Serge. This is an absolute pleasure to be here. You can see the health in the birds. The loft is fantastic. Super quality. Thank you for showing us the hens You're welcome. and the youngsters. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Here we are, Serge Van Elsecker. We are going into his widowhood loft. Yep. Man, we've got the rain today. Do you want to go in ahead? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come Beautiful. On. Come on. It hasn't been cleaned for a month again, <laughs> but once we start racing, I clean every day. But before that, I don't do it. I believe they have to be a little natural. And maybe I'm too lazy, it's possible too, but. So all the, all, uh, these are the widowhood boxes? Yeah, we have uh, each, uh, each loft has 16 boxes. And uh, one uh, has 24, I have 100 in. Uh, 80, I have 100 and, what how many did I have? Uh, 20, 20, 70, 20, 70, 20, 80, 80. I have 112 boxes or so, I have 50 cocks. Now, a uh, question, just if you can come here, I want to ask you, for people who don't know how these boxes work, Yeah. how does it work? Uh, each cock has their own box. Each cock has their own box. The hens are in the back in the aviary. Okay. Um, the the box go open like that when the hens in. But I raised total with the hood, so there's never a hen in. They're all out. Okay. This door slides open too. This goes open when the nest is there, and this goes close when you have to lock them in. 
Oh, you lose a cock, you shut a box? Yeah, 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 then I'll do it because otherwise I'm in trouble because the old, the other cocks, they, they as soon as they, uh, as you lose one, they take advantage of that uh, box. Eh? Also, do you feed the, the cocks in the box? I did uh, when I fed them uh, regular widowhood. Right. I did that. I don't do it anymore, but what I do when they come home, uh, cocks and hens uh, are locked in the boxes when they are all home. I lock them in because I, I have too many fight fighting when I'm when I'm away with my clock to the club. Okay. So I lock them in and I give them some small seat in those boxes, not feed, but some uh, some treat. Candy mix. Yeah. Okay. That when they and they don't get any food until I uh, regular mixture to, until I get home from the club. Okay. It, it takes sometimes two hours, sometimes three hours. It depends how good I had the race. <laughs> right. <laughs> how big the partying's going on? Yes. <laughs> Okay. And uh, after that, I feed them normally here on the floor um, in, in those uh, grills. And all winter, they are fed in the floor, in the, in the what do you call it in English? Uh, the feeder. In the feeder. I yeah. notice you have the automatic cleaning boxes. Yeah. How do yeah. you like them? Unbelievable. They're worth it? Oh, they're worth it. These are, uh, these are 31 years old now. These self-cleaning boxes? Yeah, 31, 31 years. years old. Still the same belts? Nothing happened in 31 years. Wow. Yeah, so unbelievable. A good, good. investment. A little expensive, but a good investment. Oh, yeah. My oldest boxes are, I think, 45 years old. I, had, I was the first in Belgium who had them. And I brought them over from my old loft. I brought some boxes over here. And they're, they're 45 years old. And they still work perfectly. Wow. Yeah. Really. And you just turn them on once a day? Are they on yeah, a timer? I'll put them, I will put them on. No, I do it. I don't have a timer. Uh, it's a good idea, but I never came to it. I just have it here and okay. I push the button. You, you flick the switch for people to see just how it works. And it just scrapes off at the end? Yep. Now I notice you don't have this in the young bird loft. Yeah, I do. You do? See, I, I do. missed that. I do. I'm not <laughs> I'm not focused. No. I don't I only have a little uh, breeding loft which I don't, but all the other boxes, all my racing lofts, every loft I have is automatically boxed. And that's how it goes. Clean whenever you want. It doesn't make it not very noisy. No, no, absolutely not. And you've never changed the belts or anything? I changed some belts, but these are the original belts. Uh, some some I changed because I had once a problem that uh, they were working on the electricity. Right. And I pushed the button and no electricity. And I forgot to re we switch it right so when I got electricity the belts turn to uh, start turning and they turned for six hours and then I had a belt broken because it was my own stupid mistake uh, the belt got doubled and yeah. when it got doubled he got scraped off and he was I had to put a new belt in that's oh. uh, for sure but that's a little adjustment eh? also don't don't film that. Don't film that. <laughs> okay, we don't know even what that is. Oh yeah, it is. It's a very good. It's a very good thing. I, I don't put it on in the winter. Okay. I don't put it on in the week. But when they come home from the race and it's <laughs> like this, it's Belgian weather. I put it on all day. A little I bit. I like of... to have them comfortable, warm. Okay. I have to have. I, I like to have the condition like uh, I want it to be. All right. And uh, I think they recover better getting through this bad weather help them recover better than if they should sit here in the cold. All right, and do you only use these in the the uh, the old bird loft? Uh, you use I have it in young bird loft too, but okay. in young bird loft it's very rare that it happens because it's the usually warm. rain May, June, July, uh, race May, June, July. So the heat's there. And the, the, the loft is warm enough. Okay. But if I should race till the end of September and the night's getting uh, longer and colder, I put it on during the night with the young birds. With the old birds, it's only when they come home from racing. But when the hens stay with the cocks that night, I, I leave it on all night too. It's on all day. It's but on. there's a, you see there's a th thermostat, yeah, th thermostat, thermostat there. on it and it's uh, 22 degrees I put it on. Okay, so it just takes the chill out. It doesn't, yeah, it, it's, it's real comfortable then when you when you enter the loft you feel, ooh, it's comfortable here. Okay. And I like that, maybe I like it more for me than for my pigeons, but I find that they recover good. And how long have you had the heat in your loft? How many years? 35 years. Okay, so we know. Not always these.
these no. are always these plates eh? because they're they're pretty uh, they're these are about 10 years old I think yeah whenever they wear out you put something new in yeah okay yeah, yeah. Quite simple, and again, the boxes went around there. What was that? A, not even a minute. Super clean. Boy, I gotta get myself a, some of these. Oh, it, it's an investment. It, it's you love it. Unbelievable. Yeah. Like, very, very nice. Professional. It was the first thing I ever invested in. It was an easy loft, easy to take care of, a good loft that I don't have to scrape all day pigeon shit because it's a lot of work if I should have 120 boxes cleaned every day twice. Yes. And now I push the button, I, I let them out, I feed them and, and it runs and it's clean. And no problems. I mean, hey, you've used it for 35 no. years and you're happy with them. So no. you build a new loft tomorrow, you're going to go with these again. Oh, guarantee. Guarantee. No. The only thing you have to be careful of, I, I saw uh, once a program on the Kirk, you know, the, okay. the good Kirk. Yes. They had it and they removed it again because the, the wind was blowing through it and it's a, it's a draft. If I should have, let's say, one belt over the whole loft, it wouldn't be a good belt because the wind blows through it. Now, here, you look here. Okay, let's see. It's, it's all closed after each loft. Right. And the wind stays in the loft. It doesn't blow through it. So you're not getting a... Uh, you don't get a, how do you call it in English? I don't uh, a draft. A draft. You don't get a draft. You don't get a draft. And, and that's what uh, Bas Verkeur didn't like. He had a draft. But I told him, you had too many boxes on one belt. And I know it's cheaper, but because every belt you buy, you have to have an engine. Right. And, but I think it's worth doing loft by loft that you get the climate of the loft, not a draft. Very, very uh, important uh, for the health of the pigeons. I will say in this loft, there's no draft. No, okay. I try to avoid that. Okay, another question I'm gonna ask you. This beautiful blue thing, what is this? A vacuum cleaner. Okay. Really, I you, couldn't miss it. You vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. in race season, you are in here, you'll vacuum the floor? Yeah, yeah. The, oh. And now in winter, like these, these small feathers, I put just put it on for a second, and uh, maybe the noise, but. That's okay. I just. I just vacuumed the small feathers and it stays a little clean. It's not clean, but it's uh, it's 20 seconds and it takes some. So you'll va you'll scrape the section, give it a quick vacuum. Yep. I see a broom, maybe a quick sweep. Yep. That's it. You do it when the birds are in or out? Out. Always never, out. Never when the birds are in. Okay. No. That's why I don't clean in the winter because my birds never come out. Well, and that's uh, a, that's a bl beautiful blue checker cock over there. That one? Yeah. That's a very good one. That's a very that's, good one. That's my only pigeon I have from 2018. It's a four-year-old. <laughs> it's a real, real good one. A real good one. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only one from 18. I have a few from 19. I have uh, 12 from 20. Yeah. And I have 85 yearlings. This is another nice one, the checker cock here as well. That's a yearling. I don't yeah. know if that's a good one. <laughs> I think he's going to be a good one. And what about what about the uh, the red checker there? The red checker is a story on itself. Uh, he should have won two first as a young bird. Mm -hmm. And the first race he came it was a, a, a blow home. And he stayed up in the air for nine minutes. There was not a pigeon coming. And as soon as one came, he went down and he was ninth from 500 pigeons. The week after that, he stayed out for four minutes and he was fourth from 500 pigeons he should have won two first so I, that's why I kept him okay another question when will you pair these cocks you these cocks will pair to those hens for total widowhood the one you saw the 50 yes. hens yes. yes they are paired the 20th of March always the 20th of March oh, last year it was the first of April but I found when the weather get crappy then in between I don't have time enough to get on to get by the first of May on the 300 than 70 kilometers so I like to have 20 of March as soon as they pair I start training the cocks uh, 5 miles 10 miles 20 miles that's it as soon as they have eggs and they have they're sitting on eggs I start training the hens and that's it they can sit on the eggs for about 15 days mm -hmm. not five days or seven days like people say because they stop molting that's not true uh, they can sit sometimes they had little babies that was a little too late and then I removed everything when they come home from a, a race a training race and they on with it until the second week in August so these birds 
first race, the cocks and the hens, the first real race will be what date? It will be uh, 17th or 24th of April. Okay. When are you going to start letting these cocks out for exercise? Next week. Next week. Next week. The cocks will go out for their time? Oh, this loft go out, and then next day that loft go out, and then the day after the hens go out. Not regular. Not regular at all. They Why start going because I have too much problem with the bird of prey. I have to be a little bit careful. So once we go to 10th of March, I try to let them out for 10 days before I pair them up. And once they're paired up, I start training. And if, it, if it's good weather, I, I train three, four days in a row. If it's bad weather, I let them out in between. Uh, but then I let them out on a regular base. Once we uh, half of March. Okay, so uh, they they will start going out on their own. When will you you'll pair them again? You said on the twentieth of, of March. Of March. When you have them paired, you let them out together, obviously. I let the cocks out. As I don't let them out. Uh, cocks and hens. No. Uh, when when they're paired, I train the cocks. Yes. I let the hens in the loft. Okay. When they are having eggs, I let the hens out. I let the cocks in the loft. Okay. Quite simple. It's simple. I try to make it as simple as I can because I have to do everything on my own. So it's a big loft to do on your own. Yeah, this is a lot of work. No help? No help. No, no. loft managers? No loft managers. And my wife, got, um, she has a pigeon uh, lung. Yeah, and she cannot go in the loft. Okay. So yep. quite simple, really. And these cocks and the hens, you're going to fly them. The cocks are here and the hens are here. Oh. I forgot you got the back, that's right. Wire floor. Holy jumping, the hens are here, eh? Yeah, they're the hens. So the hens just stay on the V purchase? Yep. So just a straight V purchase. Take it, you feed them here? I feed, I have feeders in here, but everything has to be cleaned out uh, very good. And then I feed them here. And once in the evening, uh, I lock them here and lock them there, like that. If I have hands that start mating each other, I take one out, put them there. They cannot go to each other. And I notice all the sections are the same. Yeah. Okay. When the hens are in here, they stay in here, they don't come out in the... Oh yeah, they, they come out here all day, yes. but in the evening, around 5, 6, when they have food, I lock them in there. Okay. So very... But those doors, you, you feel the draft now, the wind, cold, yes. those doors are closed. So there's doors even on the front that yeah, yeah. close. Plastic door, uh, plexi doors. Plexi doors. They're closed. I don't want draft in here. So... And uh, I have the heaters, the, the, the heating plates also here. In here as well? Yeah. Very, you're very consistent man. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no yep. lie. There's the heat heat plate. Yep. Droppings go down. How often do you pull out the the panels? Once a week. I clean where the where the perches are. Okay. And the other one once a month. Once a month. Yeah. Big job, eh? Big job, yeah. But I usually do it when they're in the basket before they come home from racing. Okay, so very simple. You are not a fan of draft whatsoever, and I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it closes the back here even with the, the panels to get the light in. So th this this is facing the north. north, so it doesn't really get a lot of heat. They, they get no sun. No sun. Exactly no sun, and they still raise like hell. And when you want to show them to the cocks, or yeah. how do you get them in? Do you have to basket them all? They go through the door, just like we did. Like oh boy, look at this. Slide that shot, in they go. Yeah. They come out like that too. Yeah. I put them all in the front way. So I go behind them, they all walk in here. It's like a roundabout, yeah. like a circle. Yeah. And they come out by here. The hands go out by this. And that comes out between the lofts. Huh. And they go out. They go out by that. I lock them. I, I all in chase here. them here. I lock this. Yeah. I go after them. Out. Doors open. Come in by that. Wow. When they come in, these section lofts, these cocks are there. Right. In that section. So that loft is empty. No cocks. So they, they never see it. They never see each other. No. Nope. System, you've used it how many years? Uh, 
30, uh, no, not in the first year. 25 years, I think. 25 years, yeah. I'm gonna ask you, what are some of, with this system, Yeah. some of your results, big results? Uh, big result, the Golden Dove, national champion, Olympic birth, 54 provincial wins, seven national section wins, king in the Antwerp Union, king in the South Antwerp Union, king in the half Throttle Union, provincial champion of all Antwerp, uh, name anything I didn't win. The only thing I never won is a first national overall Belgium. I was three times second, but not a first. That's the only thing I never won in these lofts with this system. I'm gonna say something. It's a beautiful loft. It's a, it's a nice setup. It works. I see you're very confident. You know what's going on. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it, and you've worked at it for so many years. And it was by accident that I found out because I, if somebody would tell me my loft facing north, I have no sun, I, I would say you can't race. But in the beginning, the first these these very these aviaries are built for my widowhood cocks to just sit here. And they come out by this, by this open in here, under the boxes, the widowhood were. Now the sun was out. Mm -hmm. The loft in front was 25 degrees. Uh -huh. Here it was 15 degrees. Right. And all my widowed cocks were sitting here. Right. Not there in the sun. Why? I had no explanation for it. But I thought when my pigeons like to sit more here than there, let's raise them from here. And it worked. And I would never try it if my pigeons hasn't shown that sitting here in the cold is no, not, a, not a disadvantage, it's, it's not a problem. And the advantage is if we have a season like three years ago when it's 35 degrees, it's still cool here. It's an advantage. Wow. It's just by accident that it that pigeon showed it because it wasn't built to race. I, I didn't race total widow in those years. And my cocks were sitting here instead of there. Wow. And they'll come through? They There's came through here, but now it's not possible anymore. Okay. Because uh, I don't want to do that anymore. So the, the boxes are closed and, and this is closed. And my hands are here, the cocks are there. Now I notice in your loft there's no exhaust fans, anything like that, uh, to, to draw. I had it all, I had it all. But these are still, they still uh, draw. Draw, but there's no electricity anymore because I cut down everything. Because I had it also in my front loft, I had it in my Youngbird loft, I had it in every loft. But then the company that built the engine went broke. <laughs> And I had a few engines that went broke, so half my system didn't work anymore. So I thought when I put new tiles on, let's put everything out and what, what happened happens and they just keep flying as good as they did before. Okay. So it's not necessary, absolutely So there's not. no draw from there at all? No. no. And this is the only thing that, that has ventilation. When that is closed, there's no ventilation in this loft. Nothing, no, zero. Right. Except that little hole here with no engine because there's no so, electricity. Is there a draw when you put your hand up to it? Can you feel it pull? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's still pull. So just a regular it's still exhaust. Pull. Just, uh, just natural. A, natural. Yeah, without pull. an engine. Without a fan. Well, Serge, I want to say thank you for bringing us in and showing us this. Yeah. You're uh, being a part of this. Fantastic. Uh, I hope, ladies and gentlemen, you enjoyed this loft tour. The young birds look fantastic. The race hens, the widowhood cocks. I love that checker cock. He looked, yeah. he looked tremendous. <laughs> I like how you have the system. I've heard so much about it. Now I've got to see it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the man himself, Serge <laughs> Van Alsacker, Belgium. Super ace flyer. Great guy. Great interview. Thank you, Serge. Welcome. Hey guys, Ryan, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. We hope you enjoyed that amazing loft tour. Please reminder to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Until the next Laugh Tour, thanks for flying with me. Bye for now.